Hey, it's two o'clock. Are you ready to live large, cook and eat small, and find flavor in everything that you do? I am ready, and my name is Michelle. I am your host with the most today. Welcome to Bariatrics and Tips, where we are going to make an amazing chicken caprese today. It's gonna be wonderful. Hopefully, this will test and tantalize your taste buds um, it's one of my favorite recipes. So I want to thank you for being here today. I hope you enjoy our time together. I always look forward to Sunday. Um, it's one thing that is the highlight of my week. It allows me to menu plan and come up with some fun recipes to share and bariatricize some really good recipes too. So, you know, one thing we have in common is that we've all had weight loss surgery or we're gearing up to have weight loss surgery. And even if you're not having or had weight loss surgery, maybe you are striving to um, achieve overall health and wellness, or maybe you're trying to combat diabetes, but whatever the reason, you are in the right place because we have every right to live large, cook and eat small, and find flavor in absolutely everything that we do. You know, food is a huge part of our lives, whether we like it or not, and we have to find ways to coexist with it. And just because we're given a weight loss surgery tool or a diabetic diagnosis or any health trials and tribulations doesn't mean we have to feel deprived of eating well. Food is just, it's part of so many different things. Um, it's part of religion and tradition and holidays and work. I mean, we have a potluck just about once a month at work. So I feel like the main thing is we don't have to feel deprived. We don't have to wonder, can we have this? Can we have that? We don't have to be asked that either. It's one of my biggest pet peeves when someone that I know who knows about my weight loss journey says, well, Michelle, can you have that? What happens if you have that? Can you have this? <coughs> Pardon me. Yes, the truth is, I can have whatever I darn well please, okay? It's up to me. And I choose not to feel deprived because the minute you feel deprived is the minute you feel out of control. And you tell me one person that loves to feel out of control. Am I right? <laughs> yes, I'm right. So remove the word deprived from your vocabulary. There is no reason you should ever have to feel that way. This is our time. It is our time to live life to the fullest, to enjoy our second chance, to embrace our rebirthday. Yes, gastric bypass for me six years ago was the day that I wished myself a happy rebirthday. It is the day that I reclaimed my life. It is the day that I decided things were gonna be different. And I hope you view your journey that way too. I've lost 130 pounds, I've kept it off. I've worked hard. The journey has not been easy. It's been good and bad and ugly and super ugly and really, really ugly and, you know, lots of lots of ugly. Um, but do I have regrets? No, I have zero regrets, but what I have is insight, okay? I'm only human, I make my share of mistakes, but now I know how to isolate those mistakes, learn from my mistakes, and combat them and get back on that weight loss weight maintenance bandwagon, okay? We can have fun in this time of our lives, okay? We can have fun with food, we can experiment, we can live, this is, it's fun to be in the kitchen and it's fun to be at the grocery store. It's one of the highlights of my week. Going to the grocery store is an adventure for me and I like to take my time. I always treat myself to a Starbucks I walk along, I listen to my, my headphones, I listen to my 80s music, um, I read labels, I look at new things, I menu plan, I get ready for this show. It's a really neat attraction in my bariatric journey, okay? So don't fear the grocery store, don't fear the kitchen, embrace it. It's empowering and inspiring to make a dish that you've either never made before or something that your family just loves over and over, okay? I've dedicated my life, my life, seriously. And my Bariatrics and Tips Facebook page and these YouTube videos 
to showing you that you can seriously have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> okay, it's all worth the time and the effort, you guys. It's worth it, I'm worth it, and I know you're worth it too. So if you are watching today, once again, thank you. I know you are here to watch this recipe demonstration. We are gonna put our Sunday Spotlight on hold this week because I received lots of responses and I didn't wanna shortchange anyone. So what I'm trying to do is I am trying to schedule the Sunday Spotlights for the rest of the year. So that way everybody who is up for that Spotlight gets appropriately recognized. You still have some spots left for the end of the year. I think we're going to, um, December 19th will be the last episode of the year before the holidays uh, take precedence. So if you're thinking about sharing your journey, please make sure you get you get your biography and your before and current pictures to me on our Bariatrics and Tips Facebook page, okay? Um, as always, if you need specific medical guidance or have specific questions to your journey, your body, your vitamins, your macros, anything, please don't hesitate to loop in your surgeon and your dietitian. Those are the pros. They can help you one-on-one. -on -one. If you have any questions about the tips and the tricks and the gadgets and the food items that you see here today, please let me know. Use our Bariatrics and Tips Facebook page to ask your questions, post your successes. We wanna see your pictures. We wanna share in your journey. We want to share recipes and hacks and everything. This is our community and this is our chance to make this Bariatrics and Tips Facebook page a page and a community like no other, okay? So please feel free to share this with your friends and family. Anyone can be a part of our community and if they support you and your journey, they are so welcome, okay? So let's move forward. Um, we are gonna do uh, a couple different recipes today. Caprese chicken is our topic of the day. And I think it's really funny. I was getting <laughs> I was getting ready for the show today and I just happened to glance at my shirt and I just think it's funny that I'm wearing an America shirt where I'm showcasing um, a traditional Italian dish. <laughs> so yay, viva Italia, viva Americano. Let's just do it all, okay? Um, chicken caprese, what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna heat up the, um, get my pan started because I've got oil in the pan and we need to cook our chicken first. So I'm going to be moving the camera around, show and telling everything to you as I do it. And during the times where the chicken has to cook, we're going to talk about another different recipe, okay? So Caprese chicken, um, it is actually named for the island in which it originated in Capri in Italy. And traditionally, caprese chicken actually consisted of wild arugula and oregano on it um, in place of basil. But everywhere else in Italy, caprese chicken or caprese salad is used with just tomatoes, basil, and fresh mozzarella cheese. Anything less than that is sacrilege, <laughs> okay? So, <clears throat> pardon me, I've got a couple things to show you. I've got mozzarella pearls and I've got fresh, they're both fresh. Fresh mozzarella pearls, these little tiny balls that are so totally delicious that I fight my dog for them, okay? Um, little mozzarella balls, I'm gonna come around, and they're nice, they're really good when you're making like a one-on-one -on -one salad or whatnot. Lego, you want some? Come here. All right, he gets my mozzarella for the time, okay? Let me come on back. I hear my oil getting ready. The first thing that we need to do is we need to season the chicken with salt and pepper. And I did just that. What I did was I pounded my chicken until they were all relatively the same thickness. And that's going to ensure that there's even cooking all around. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take you on the field trip and I'm going to move the camera over so that way we can really get um, close and comfortable here and you can see everything that I'm doing, okay? So remember, I'm not a cameraman and I don't play one on TV, so don't shoot the cameraman. Hi Julie, hi Chastity, thanks for joining us. I see Lori, thank you also. So now I am going to hope and pray 
that I can get this right, okay? So I've got the oil cooking. I've got my chicken ready to show you. So let me go over here and show you my steaming hot oven. I've got the salt and pepper on both sides. And I'm gonna cook these for just a couple minutes on each side. And we'll turn them And As these cook, I will go ahead and talk about something else, okay? So let's move on over. Woo! One day I'll have some good camera, um, good camera angles, but for now, we're just gonna go on a quick maze <laughs> on a ride. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna do is, now that the chicken is seasoned with salt and pepper and it's cooking a couple minutes on each side, we are going to transfer that to a plate after. And then we're gonna add some balsamic vinegar to the skillet and some garlic, and we're gonna cook it until it's fragrant. Um, once that's done, we're gonna add tomatoes and we're gonna season with salt. Now this caprese chicken is different than your traditional Italian caprese salad. And I'm gonna show you both of them because I think that this is a really good snack idea and a really good meal idea. Mozzarella is not only the most popular cheese in the world, it's actually one of the least caloric and healthier cheeses as well. Okay, I'm gonna turn my chicken real quick, trying to juggle all of this, but I want to make sure that you see this as well. And because these have been pounded out, it's gonna take a lot less time for them to cook, which incidentally is wonderful for us. Whoops, sorry for that. All right, it smells so good in here, you guys, and I don't even have the garlic on yet. All right. So there we go. All right, so now we are going to position this there camera. <laughs> All right, um, and so that brings me back to my discussion about the mozzarella pearls. I love to use these mozzarella balls when I'm making my own little caprese salad. And again, the ingredients for the caprese salad is just mozzarella, fresh basil, and tomato. And the tomato, I'm a tomato, Add it. But my favorite tomatoes are either the Roma tomato or the grape tomato, and I have both of them to show you today. So Roma tomatoes, I like to make sure that they're nice and firm. I don't like them super ripe. It makes it harder to cut. And then I've got these grape tomatoes, which actually is funny. As I was getting ready today, I've eaten quite a few of them um, off camera, of course, but what can you do? They're good, and they're good for you. So I've got both of those that I want to show you. But fresh mozzarella, as opposed to the mozzarella that you find shredded or sliced at the deli, a little bit different because they take a lot of the moisture out. You'll often see on the package that it's a low moisture mozzarella, part skim. And so when you're looking at fresh mozzarella, it is so, it is so moist and um, almost mushy. This is fresh mozzarella that's sliced and ready. I got it at Sam's Club. It is actually very cost effective to buy it at Sam's Club. It comes in a two pack. Um, and so when I go through my little caprese phases, which I do a couple times a month, then I just buy it at Sam's Club and everything's well in the world. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to give that a few more minutes. Let's go check our chicken. Do, 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 do. And the directions say to put this on a plate, and I'm looking at both sides, and they look fantastic, wouldn't you agree? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put these on a plate and set them aside, but we want all this good stuff in the pan to be used as well. So I'm gonna do that as well. So now we need to revamp I'm gonna get the balsamic vinegar, which I have right here, and I am gonna pour a quarter of a cup into the pan as my recipe states. All right, it's starting to reduce, and then I've got my garlic. Here I am again, got that in there. And what we're gonna do is we are going to add the garlic. We're gonna cook everything until it's nice and fragrant, okay? Sorry. Here we go. 
told you I am not a camera person. But let's see if I can, there. So there we go. You won't see me, but you'll hear me. And we're gonna cook it until it's fragrant and it is definitely getting fragrant and I can see it reducing and getting thick too. So I'm gonna lower the heat a little bit. Let me look at my recipe because I wanna tell you the exact same good stuff. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our tomatoes. And I think what I'll do is right here, we need a pint of grape tomatoes and a pint is actually two cups. So I'm gonna rearrange over here and you can kind of see me a little bit. I'm gonna cut these. Some people like to cut them long ways, some short ways. I don't think it matters. I think it's whatever, whatever you want. But a tomato, I have never turned down a tomato. I should have probably cut these up before we got on camera today, but I wanted everything to be fresh and I really wanted to give you the actual experience so you can see how easy and quick this can be and why it's one of my favorite dishes, okay? So, and we're obviously going to be having this for dinner tonight, which is even better because I am gonna make, I'm making two servings now and I'll make two servings later. All right, one more chopping should do it, you guys. My balsamic is looking good and reduced and my tomatoes are nice and bright colored and full of flavor. And there we go. So now we can add those in. Let me get, it says to add salt where needed, but I don't necessarily think that I need more salt, maybe. Doesn't it look amazing? Let me bring you closer. Hold on, I'm gonna put this, whoops down. There, that looks good. You get a front row seat to the amazingness that is my caprese chicken. All right, so we've got that done. It says that you return the chicken to the skillet. Oh, Lego. We're gonna return the chicken to the skillet. I'm gonna reach down here, hello. And I am going to put the chicken back. And actually, before I do that, it said something about, you wanna return the chicken to the skillet and you wanna nestle it in the tomatoes. So let's nestle away. <laughs> it is nestling. All right, they look properly nestled, wouldn't you say? All right, and now, the last thing to do is top it with mozzarella. And basil. And I will show you my basil plant. I didn't think I was gonna have such a small little area to work with. I'll have to rethink that next time. But at any rate, let me draw the attention to my basil plant. No. <laughs> All right, this is fresh basil. I bought it at our local grocery store. It comes in a little, it comes in a little pot here. And all I do is water it, give it love. Yes, I talk to it and everything. My basil plants are so important to me. So I'm gonna snip this and get my basil, and each leaf is gonna go in here. And you know, chicken caprese, or caprese salad, is the colors of Italy, and it was one of the um, stories about caprese salad is that it was formulated to give, um, to use all the colors of Italy so it would entice royalty. So 
I don't know, something interesting. So now we've got our mozzarella. Again, this is sliced and ready to go. So if I take a hunk of it out, I will magically, <laughs> hopefully it'll work since I'm on camera, it peels off and you're just gonna lay them over the chicken. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. This is just freaking amazing. I want to make sure that I am an equal opportunity mozzarella. I'm putting two pieces of mozz, two slices of mozzarella. Yes, and I'm licking my fingers if you can hear it. On here, and now we just have to let it melt. So I'm gonna cross over, sorry about that, and I'm gonna put the lid on it, and I am gonna return the camera to the upright position. <laughs> Yum isn't even the word to describe it, Melissa. It is quite tasty. So, okay. So now let's come back over here. And while that's melting nicely, I want to show you how to assemble just the regular caprese salad. You can do this in a grand scheme of things, or you can do it on a small scale. You can make it for yourself, for your lunch, for your sweetie or you can just keep it all for yourself. My husband, tomatoes aren't his favorite. He looks at a tomato and gets heartburn. So more for me, that's my philosophy. Um, he'll eat basil if I use it to flavor something, but he doesn't live for basil the way I do. I have to have this fresh basil around at all times. It's how I spoil myself. Just the smell of it, it makes me happy. How can you argue with something that makes you happy? Okay, so again, we want to cut some basil and we'll get ready for our caprese salad. And this one I'll use, um, I will use Roma tomato. And where do you think my knife went? Let me grab it real quick. All right, here's my knife. All you want to do is slice your tomatoes about a quarter inch. The dog is by me. He obviously, the dog likes tomatoes and the dog likes mozzarella. I don't know what his stance is on basil, but he's pretty equal opportunity. So all you're going to do is arrange, we're going to use the mozzarella pearls for this. And I just kind of throw a whole bunch of them in here. And, you know, it's all about curb appeal, too. So I want to arrange everything nice and pretty. And so let me, I'll dry my hands off. I will bring you a little closer so you can see the artistry that is caprese salad. Okay. They always recommend putting it in a flat bowl. I'm not sure. I mean, I think the flat bowls are more for presentation than anything. Um, and I'm all for curb appeal, so fine by me. So now let's get some more pearls, and then there we go. And then one in there with the pearl, and now we have to have some basil, which is my favorite. What do you think so far? Has anyone had caprese salad before? Is it, there. So there is, your dogs like fresh veggies too. My dog, Misty, my dog will eat his weight in red peppers. He loves red pepper. Um, and so this is good. Then the other thing that you can do is you can take your balsamic. Now the folks of Italy will probably freak if I do it, but you can add your balsamic vinegar to it too to give it some flavor. The thing that they want to stress is that the vinegar actually inter interferes with the flavor of the mozzarella and so they kind of consider this whole thing taboo. But again, it's all about flavor. Finding flavor in everything that you do is so imperative. And um, I think for this exercise, it's actually really pretty too. So again, here it is, caprese salad without chicken. So this is a great snack. You could bring this on the go. 
you can make it and watch it in front of the TV if you need to. Um, but let's go ahead and let's check on our caprese chicken. Should be done. Everything's nice and melty. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is amazing. This is amazing. I am not winning any award today for the camera angle. And it doesn't matter because my big thing is making sure that you are able to see how easy it is to find your way in the kitchen, even if it's not something that you enjoy doing all that much. There are easy ways to create flavor and feel satisfied. And that's the point that I wanna drive home. That's the whole purpose of bariatrics and tips. So here is chicken caprese. Oh, isn't that lovely? I'm gonna have to take a picture of it before I dig into it. But you can see where um, the mozzarella is nice and melty. You can see, I, in fact, what I might do is turn up the heat just a little bit. And now I'll try a tomato. Oh my gosh, you guys. The flavor of the tomatoes is so good, even with the balsamic, especially with the balsamic. It's super lovely. So I want to make sure that that gets melted. But again, you can see this. You are going to have this recipe today at 3 o'clock. It will be posted. It is absolutely delicious. Look at how few ingredients are needed in order to be able to live large and cook and eat small. These are three chicken breasts right now. My guess is I probably won't be able to eat a full one. Um, and again, I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna keep this on the burner long because I don't want to lose that beautiful basil green color. And I don't wanna bleach out the color of the tomatoes either. But there you are. So I'm gonna put it on low, let it melt, let it chill. I'm gonna bring you back over here, all right? So you saw two different ways for us to do caprese. You saw the caprese salad and you saw the chicken caprese. Um, I will have both of those recipes for you. I'm really excited to have recipes that include such fresh ingredients, okay? And that being said, um, a lot of people have asked, I mean, I've done a lot of research on caprese and things like that. But I want to make sure, and I am looking down at my, that's, if you can see, I've got a little, thanks, Lori, I appreciate it. Sorry for the camera ship, is that a word? But at any rate, um, someone did ask me um, the other day the difference between bruschetta and caprese, and so I want to make sure I address, address that. Bruschetta involves the toasted bread slices. Obviously, it involves um, a basil, tomato and basil mixture, which traditionally has um, the balsamic vinegar in it too. But the caprese is less refined than that. It's more served fresh as opposed to cooked. So I wanted to make sure that I told you about that. Um, what else did I wanna tell you? I think that's all I've got for you on that. Let's talk about what we have in the works for upcoming shows. Thanks, Melissa, I appreciate it. Um, next week, October 17th, we have, our demonstration is Asian chicken lettuce wraps. Again, one of my favorites and one of my family's favorites too. So you'll wanna make sure that you stay tuned. And then on October 24th, you told me that you wanted to see apples, pumpkins, stuff for the season, so I listened. So we are going to dedicate October 24th's Facebook Live recipe demonstration to apples and cinnamon, and it's going to be delicious. I cannot wait. Okay, Misty, did you use a balsamic vinegar or a glaze? I used balsamic vinegar, and um, it reduced with the heat. Um, October 31st, Halloween, I'm going to do jalapeno cheese fritters. Oh, they're so good, you guys. I can't wait to share that recipe. November 7th, pumpkin, pumpkin ricotta protein pie. Okay, again, you asked, I listened. We've got stuff for the season. November 14th is called pumpkin spice. And I've got some really great things in the works that I can't wait to show you for that. 
November 21st, spaghetti squash pizza cups. That's an amazing one. Nice comfort food. Um, and the same with November 28th, sweet potato protein pancakes. Yummy. Um, the December 5th, spinach frittata, which is really going to be a great breakfast for maybe Christmas morning or Thanksgiving morning. Oh, it'll be lovely. December 12th, double chocolate almond walnut protein brownies. Perfect to get ready for Christmas. And then December 19th, again, you asked and I listened. The title is called Peppermint, okay? It's going to be fantastic. I love peppermint so much. So there you go. Remember, Bariatrics and Tips is on all social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Um, uh, what am I missing? Snapchat. It's not Snapchat. Oh, Snapchat. Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We have covered it, okay? If you want to be on a Sunday spotlight, I would love to feature you. Please let me know so I can schedule you in. And the good thing about scheduling you in is that you'll be able to tell your friends and family when you're going to be featured so that way they can tune in too, okay? So it's, oh, TikTok too. I did, did I say TikTok, Melissa? Thank you. TikTok as well. All social media realms, okay? So thank you so much for hanging with me today in my kitchen. It's been so much fun. I think I'm going to go sample some caprese chicken <laughs> after I take a picture, okay? So at any rate, thanks again. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Whatever you do, make it flavorful, okay? Thanks so much. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.